Welcome to the Extended Bench, your YouTube home for all things rugby league news, analysis, history, and opinion. Subscribe so you don't miss a video and give us a thumbs up. The Extended Bench is part of the Rugby League Monthly Network, which includes a monthly online digital magazine available at rugbyleaguemonthly.com and the daily podcast Rugby League Daily, which airs during the NRL season. All links are down below in the description. Let's get into it. Ponga, Ponga, Ponga. That's generally all you hear about Newcastle. Is Ponga fit? How well is Ponga playing? Can he be as good as Joey? The Newcastle fullback has had greatness thrust upon him since his junior days in North Queensland, and that it was only enhanced when he journeyed south after signing a mouth-watering contract with the Knights. Newcastle's 2021 season did hinge quite a lot on the fitness of Caelan Ponga. He's a game-breaker, match-winner, footballing wizard. He's got the footwork, vision, hands and passing game to be one of the best in the NRL. His time at the Knights has been a little bit up and down. He's played 74 games for the clubs for 34 wins and 40 losses. That's a 45% win rate. And Newcastle has played 92 games in that period, so he's missed 18 matches, which, for your match winner, isn't ideal. Especially when, so far, the Knights are often only just scraping into the eight. But it's not just the reliance on Ponga that has hurt Newcastle in recent seasons. Their defence has been pretty porous, to say the least. They conceded 571 points last season, which was the second most in the top eight, while their minus 143 differential was actually one of the worst in NRL history. Only the Canberra Raiders of 2002 had a worst points differential and still qualified for the finals. However, they only managed it because the Bulldogs were stripped all of their points that season. So not only were they leaky in defence, but their attack only functioned in spits and spurts. Their 428 total points actually sat them 15th on the ladder. They only bested the hapless Bulldogs who were kept po pointless at one stage in the season for about three weeks. Still, finals football is finals football, and for a club that won three consecutive wooden spoons, I'm sure they'll take seventh any day of the week. But this is Newcastle we're talking about, and they're still looking for the man to replace Joey Johns just like the Eels are still hunting for the next Sturlow. The Knights have had designs on top eight again, and they should, but when I wrote this originally, this was at the start of January. Yes, they lost Mitchell Pearce, just as he was striking up a combination with Jack Clifford, but they had recruited Adam Clune and managed to tempt Dane Gagai back to Newcastle. I had them fighting for that 8th spot. That was until Jaden Braley tore his Achilles tendon at training. It's hopefully for him and Knights not a season-ending injury. Recovery rates have been pretty good around the 5-6 to six month mark, but losing your hooker for half a season is going to hurt an already new spine. The current game relies so much on your hooker and Braley has been good. He's at the very least provided a reliable and familiar option within the squad. So without him, they're going to have a spine with three players who have hardly played for the club and pretty much haven't played together. Throwing Connor Watson's departure to Bondi and things aren't looking great, even if Kurt Mann will replace him on the bench. That being said, the Knights forward pack is a pretty imposing one with the Saifidi brothers alongside David Clammer and Salaso Su. In the back row, they've got plenty of experience with Tyson Frizzell, Mitch Barnett and Lachlan Fitzgibbon, while junior Brody Jones grew into first grade during 2021 and has likely locked himself down a spot in the top 17. The back line is a bit of an interesting one, with the aforementioned Ponga and Gay Guy alongside Bradman Best, Denari Tuala and Heimel Hunt. Both Tuala and Hunt were off-cast from their previous clubs, who still don't look completely comfortable in first grade. Part of that might have been the instability in the Newcastle back line last season, with new centres and wingers a fairly regular occurrence. Bradman Best, meanwhile, has been well below his, well, best. He's a big, physical and powerful unit, but teams have been marking him heavily recently, while the Knights haven't done a great job in getting him early ball with plenty of space. He's had some injury troubles in his young career, but Newcastle need him fit and firing to add another dimension to their fairly spluttering attack. With yet another new halves pairing and a long-term injury to their starting hooker, I don't really see Newcastle improving on last season. It's going to take time for that spine to gel and understand how they play, and you throw in Ponga heading off to Origin alongside Daniel Saifidi, and the Knights are going to be seriously stretched by the middle of the season. So unfortunately for them, I can only see an 11th place finish. <laughs>